always look like I have like food around my mouth. I genuinely don't have food around my mouth this time. It's like red marks either side of my lips but anyway hey guys welcome back to my channel and welcome to today's video as you can tell from the title this video is basically going to be all about how i got my period back if you have recently seen my period story video then you'll know all about this you'll know that i've recently started to talk about my period and my experiences with and without periods and in that video specifically i did say that i was going to film this video where I kind of talked about what I did to try and get my period back. Something I should say right at the start of this video is obviously I'm just Holly, I'm not a medical professional. So I'm just gonna be relaying my personal experiences, what I have done personally. And you know, it's gonna be very different for everyone. So something I would highly recommend is you going to speak to a doctor or a medical professional. If you are going through something similar or you have been through something and you just need advice, please, please go and seek help. But regardless, I do hope this video is useful. So we're just gonna dive straight in and we are gonna start with my experiences with losing my period. And again, another disclaimer is like, you know, if you are gonna be triggered by this, then maybe it's best to click off this video and maybe come back to it at a time in your life when you feel a lot better and more comfortable in yourself. If you basically haven't watched my period story video before this one, then it might be useful to do that because you'll get an insight into like my backstory and kind of my life growing up. I'm not gonna talk about all of that again here, obviously. I'm just gonna talk specifically about my experiences with period loss. So basically amenorrhea, which means having no period. And as I said in that video, I don't know exactly when I lost my period, but roughly i think i lost my period for about six or seven years and maybe even longer than that like it's such a long duration and basically it was a hypothalamic amenorrhea as we found out in my period story video i have a hard time saying that i have a hard time pronouncing things in general but hypothalamic amenorrhea and it's specifically called functional hypothalamic amenorrhea where your hypothalamus which is involved in you know the menstrual cycle the ovarian cycle and the production of reproductive hormones the hypothalamus basically isn't functioning properly if you are interested in any of the biology behind this my latest biology video is all about the ovarian cycle and the menstrual cycle so you can go and find out about all of that over on that channel if you want to check it out and like the key causes of functional hypothalamic amenorrhea i'm actually getting better at saying it are basically under eating over exercising and high stress levels and i definitely think that all three of those contributed to me not having a period for the six or seven years as i described and that is all tightly linked to my history of growing up dancing and then going through an eating disorder itself going to a top performing university going to cambridge and being really quite stressed for my three years so many people go through this and i feel like i now have a responsibility to talk about it and to open up about it and to make people more aware because yes, I will hands down say that I turned a blind eye to it. I just cast it aside and was like, it's fine. Like I'm fine when I clearly wasn't. I feel really quite passionate about this at the moment. So when I start talking about it, I start to not really ramble, but I just really go off on one tangent. Something that I was not told directly, I heard this through my sister actually. And this was by a medical professional, which is really worrying, a doctor. They told her that she should enjoy not having a period whilst it lasts, which is so bad. And as I said, that came from a doctor. And so if doctors are giving out that advice, that doctor is not doing their job correctly. But you know, if you think that someone is telling you something that's not quite right, go and get a second opinion. And having heard that myself and being brutally honest, I kind of latched onto that and was like, you know, yeah, I don't have to worry about not having a period. And I have kind of lived with that mindset for a very long time and i'm not blaming that person you know okay they said what they said they shouldn't have said that but ultimately it's like my life i should have realized and taken that responsibility and i feel like deep down for the longest time i've known that it's not right but a voice inside my head has kept me thinking that it's okay to not have a period but what i'm saying to you now if you are someone that doesn't have any other underlying medical conditions and you should be having a period then that is healthy for you to have a period and you shouldn't be you know not having one again i've gone off on a tangent right but anyway so when did things all kind of start to change for me so i am actually because i didn't say this explicitly in my period story video i am going to show you a picture of me 
on the day I got my period back. I was still at a point when I hadn't come to terms with having a period yet. And so I didn't feel myself physically. I didn't feel happy mentally. So it was just a really tough time for me. That picture was the day I started my masters last year. If you remember that day, because I actually vlogged that day and it was really an emotional day. And that was the primary reason. But anyway, it was the 28th of September. I thought it was the end of September, but yeah, quite a few months later and having worked so much on myself, I am just so happy that that day occurred like so so happy but something else i wanted to mention was around the time when i started to notice changes in my body and in myself and i started to recognize symptoms of me potentially getting my period back in my head i was kind of experiencing this kind of like tug of war on the one hand i had this voice telling me you know that i didn't need to have a period it was okay for me to enjoy not having a period but at the same time there was a part of me deep down, the kind of like logical and rational Holly, basically. That part of me was like, you know, Holly, it's not healthy for you to not have a period and for you to have not had it for so long. Like, you should really try and get your period back. Like, I had this kind of tug of war going on. And I feel like it was coincidental, but I was hearing a lot about periods on like podcasts that I'd be listening to, or I'd be hearing other people share their stories and their experiences and, you know, talk about the benefits of getting their period back. And so I was kind of starting to come to terms with the fact that I needed to have a period to be healthy for myself. And, you know, it was okay to have a period. And with amenorrhea, like hypothalamic amenorrhea, some of the long-term consequences are like, you know, brittle bones, osteoporosis, infertility, psychological problems, even like cardiovascular disease. I was aware of all of those kind of like health effects and it was like the osteoporosis in particular that stood out to me. But regardless, all of those health consequences and the side effects, you know, like infertility, psychological issues, cardiovascular disease, as I mentioned, nobody should want to experience those. And so that kind of started to hit home. So moving on to the main part of this video then, how did I ultimately get my period back? And you know, as I said at the start of this video, I would first of all recommend going to see a doctor, seeing like a medical professional because everyone is different. So, you know, the amount of food that you need to eat, the amount of body fat that you need to gain to be healthy again and to get your period back will differ for everyone. At the very least, go and get your blood test done. I actually, for this video, because I was actually intrigued, I looked back through some of my like health record type things now these were from my blood test i got done oh actually on the 17th of february in 2017 so i was in my first year of cambridge but basically i have the levels of my lh and fsh which are two key hormones in involved in the ovarian and the menstrual cycles. That's all explained in my biology video. As I said before, check out that video if you're interested. But basically, both of those are incredibly low. I do not fall anywhere near the normal range, which is so bad. And that is ultimately why I didn't get a period. They did offer me to be put on the pill. Um, that is obviously a personal decision I chose not to. However, if you've watched this video, you know, and you maybe go and get your blood test done, that might help you kind of like realize that you know you need to make some changes so jumping back to like my personal experiences then obviously as i said i got my period back last year in september and you know since then i've been working on two things i was first of all and most importantly trying to change my mindset you know change the way i viewed periods and you know come to terms with the fact that I needed to have a period and then secondly I needed to regulate my periods and ensure that you know my body was functioning normally inside so I'm basically going to start by talking about everything to do with like food so yeah the first thing that I'm going to say is I needed to simply eat more now if you are anyone like me or if you're similar to me then that might scare you and that was the case for me you know i was always in complete denial and i was always like no i don't need to eat more like i'm eating enough and yes i did eat quite a lot you know but the reality is you know like holly you are someone with quite a fast metabolism you are active so you need to eat even more and that has just taken me a really long time to realize you know like just eating more is going to fuel your body properly you know i got my period back last year in September and that is when I was going through a binge eating period so my binge eating was a blessing in disguise really and you know as much as it took a negative toll on my mental health it was like the thing that my body needed to kickstart my period again because you know to get a period back you need 
excess energy your body burns more energy when you're on your period and so to get your body to have a period you need to eat more and during that time yes i'd realized the amount of food i needed to eat to like bring my period back but you know as i said like binge eating is not sustainable so what i have done since to increase like my food intake i have increased the amount of fat that i have been consuming for a long time since going vegan i've eaten a lot of carbs a lot of fruit a lot of veg a lot of pasta potatoes rice oats you know I have always eaten a lot of carbohydrates but you know as females we need fat in our diet you know males can get away with eating less fat than females and that's just body composition that's just nature you can't change that and so basically i just wasn't eating enough fat and so through eating more fat you know i could increase my calorie intake and i could give my body the nutrients it needed to you know make me have a period eating fat is not gonna make you fat okay i feel like that is sad but not sad enough you know like eating fat is not going to make you fat and something that is really quite important here is yes i had to eat when i didn't feel so hungry i had to eat more than i thought i needed but you know that is all again part of this kind of like recovery process it's all about giving your body surplus energy especially whilst your body is trying to kickstart your period again the final thing i do want to say about food is something i've changed like very recently but i feel this very small subtle change has made like the biggest difference and this is basically to eat within the first hour at least or the first half an hour if you can of waking up um excuse me and for me that has been like a big change i had to make that's something that i've never really done i always used to wake up and go for quite a long time without eating and so you know i now eat as i said as soon as i can after i've woken up and after i've done my teeth that is like my first breakfast it's kind of like what i have every single day you know before i do anything because that has just made the biggest difference as i said very much related to eating is basically decreasing my exercise intensity now something that i know is very controversial is like exercising whilst you're trying to get your period back but as i said for the longest time i have just not been in the right mental headspace i've been kind of ignoring the fact that i needed to have a period however during the time when i was kind of like binge eating which was like the summer of last year i was not doing as much exercise i had an injury and so naturally my exercise intensity decreased i was spinning on my spin bike but it was very low intensity i remember i would go outside on my bike normally in the evenings i would just sit on my bike and just spin but it was literally me just like turning my legs very very easily at that time i was just i was going through a lot okay and so i didn't have the motivation to to exercise and to put effort into exercising and so again that was a blessing in disguise but you know since then in me trying to regulate my period i have decreased my exercise intensity so i don't run as much as i did at one point again speak to a professional they might say to stop exercise altogether i'm not sitting here to say what you should do but what i did do is i definitely decreased my exercise intensity and i made sure i was doing more strength training more stretching and at the same time as i said i was boosting the amount i was eating so i was trying to be conscious of eating enough to fuel the amount of exercise i was doing something else i want to talk about in a video is like the benefits of you know getting your period back and gaining weight and stuff you know like and becoming healthy all round if you would be interested in hearing that then let me know again down below kind of related to food i have recently been supplementing like with a multivitamin in the past i used to just supplement with b12 which you need as a vegan and then vitamin d i don't know if that's made much of a difference and it's just there as like a backup you know i hope to get most of my vitamins and my minerals from the foods that i'm eating and the variety of foods that i'm eating but you know i do now take a multivitamin just as a fail safe another thing that's kind of like related to supplements it's not a supplement but it's like a powder it's maca powder and maca powder is really good at regulating and balancing your hormones now i don't know how much of an impact it really makes but i have recently been adding a lot more maca to my foods and you know i add it to my smoothies you can add it to oats you can literally add it to anything and i'm not just talking about a sprinkling if you're using maca powder you need a lot it tastes so good i love the taste of maca powder that's like an extra benefit but, you know i add a lot of maca powder you can like i believe get maca tablets and stuff and you guys know i get a lot of my 
powders and stuff from my vegan if you're interested again this is not sponsored but my discount code is holly going back to the food actually and on the topic of like powders and stuff something else that has helped me to increase my calorie intake is you know adding protein powders you know i don't think protein powders are essential at all i love the flavors they bring such amazing flavors to food but they help me to increase my calorie intake you know and it makes it more satiating as well so protein powders i feel like have helped me and i've only recently started to incorporate protein powders into my diet on a regular basis and the two final things that i just wanted to mention were first of all trying to reduce your stress levels again it's easier said than done but you know you have to try and be mindful of your stress levels whether that's getting outside in nature whether that's doing some yoga or some light stretching whether that's reading before bed you know i read every day for about 20 minutes to half an hour or so before i go to bed because i feel like that just helps me calm down and you know like get into a zen mode before i go to sleep and the final thing that i have actively tried to do and that i have actively changed is basically the amount of sleep that i have been getting throw back again to the cambridge days i used to get up super early like i used to get up at like 6 30 or 7 every single day and you know there's always been a part of me since then deep down that's like holly you should still be getting up early but when i realized that you know my body needed to get its period back and my body needed to change i was like i need to give my body rest so it can actually make those changes seven hours is the minimum if i can get more that's great because the next thing in the last part of this video is going to be talking about the changes that i noticed as i got my period back and one of those is fatigue like i felt a lot more tired when my body was going through these changes sleep is so important and very underrated sleep until your heart is content dream those dreams that i never have you know dream sweet dreams and get your sleep okay so the final part of this video let me just have some water because again i have just spoken so much in this video i don't know how long it's gonna be i wanted to talk about some of the changes that i noticed when i was starting to get my period back and some of the changes that i now experience regularly because i i have a period so yeah first of all let's talk about bloating again going back to like my binge eating yes that made me bloated because i was binge eating in the evenings but when i started to notice that my hormones were kicking back in that was also contributing to me bloating bloating is a recognized and a normal symptom of you having your period around your period when you're on your period but you are gonna bloat and me having a period now like a period bloat is normal like i can literally put on the screen right now a very recent picture of me bloating because of my period it's a bloat related to my hormones changing in my body and that's normal yeah i hope that is the proof that you need and you know just be okay with it moving on from bloating then so one thing i mentioned before was tiredness i felt a lot more tired than usual when i was getting my period back i started to notice like headaches um boob ache and boob swelling is another thing i noticed some other small things but things i still think are worthy of mentioning i got a few more spots that came up here and there but, you know i get spots that come up under the skin some of them are quite painful but you know i get the odd spot here and there and i noticed as well that my hair especially on my legs got a bit darker and it's just to do with me like maturing and my body finally reaching a level of maturity that it's supposed to be at for me being like a 23 year old you know and the final thing is quite tmi but i do want to mention it because it's normal and it's natural but you know a key sign or symptom of your period coming back is discharge leading up to me getting my period back i remember having discharge for a long time a few weeks i'm talking about here look for signs of discharge well don't look for signs of discharge you'll know if you have discharge or not okay i'm sorry and i'm sorry to say as a matter of fact but yes discharge is a sign it's a normal part of the female reproductive system and us going through the cycles so yeah oh my gosh again i don't know how long i have been sitting here and chatting with you guys for but i just wanted to share as much information as possible in this video to make it as formative and as helpful as possible i again just really hope you took something away from this at the very least i just hope it helped convince you that having a period if you are someone that should be having a period you know it is okay it is healthy it will I don't know it will change your life genuinely i feel like i've started a whole new chapter so yeah please definitely like this video if you did enjoy it comment down below if you have any video idea suggestions or if you have any questions or anything you'd like to share and yeah if you want to stick around and subscribe then definitely do that because i am still planning on filming a video as well where i 
talk to you guys and share my experiences trying to use the menstrual cup because I have never used one of those things in my whole entire life. But yeah, as always, thank you for listening. If you made it to the end, comment down below a pink heart emoji. I feel like that is relevant for this video. But yeah, and as always, I will speak to you very soon in another video. Bye!